All right, the litigants for the next in the people's court. No, wait, that's not me either, deadheads. All right, deadheads, welcome back to my channel, or welcome for the first time, new deadheads. Today, we're going to do our review of the Aya Neo Flip DS. So what did I think about it? Well, we're going to get into that in a minute. But first, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe so you can keep in touch with everything we're doing here on the channel as we're growing this community. Also, continue to leave us comments, Deadheads. Really enjoy the banter going on in our community. And check out our community forum where I'm posting all kinds of cool and unique things that are happening overseas in China. So anyways, let's head into this review and let's talk about this very unique form factor. And does it succeed or is it a flop? We'll be right back. And we're back. All right, so this here is the Ion Neo Flip dual screen. There's also the keyboard version, but we went with the dual screen because we wanted something that's unique and different. And this guy right here is definitely unique and different. Um, it is certainly a unit that surprised us in our unboxing with its size and um, really, has a lot of things that are, are good and strong about it and a lot of things that are you know a little irritating about it but first let's go over the specs as i throw the specs up here in the uh video here and this is yet another amd 7840u handheld so it does have the same processor that you're going to find in other handhelds from uh one uh, X player, Aya Neo, some of the other competitors in the space. Uh, of course, you got the Legion Go. <laughs> so we know pretty well how this chipset performs. This is a retro gaming based channel, so I'm not testing this in the sense of what a PC gamer would be looking for. So keep that in mind. I'm more focused on how this performs as a retro gaming handheld, especially since it has such a uh, ability with these dual screens to do things like Nintendo DS and 3DS. Um, it does come with both a 7 inch 120 hertz uh, 1080p screen which has a dynamic stunning colors and silky smooth visuals. The second screen is a three and a half inch screen, um, which gives it that uniqueness that we were talking about. It is a 960 by 640 touchscreen secondary screen. Um, it gives you a three to screen ratio down there, which again is really good for um, retro gaming. As far as other specs, we picked up the model with 16 gigs of uh, RAM and 512 gigabyte hard drive. This does support um, micro SD card, so I actually do have a one point, uh, have a one terabyte micro SD card in here as well to give it that expanded storage. It does have two USB C ports, and let me show you where those ports are at. We'll take a tour of the handheld now. So you do have the two USB C ports that are right here. Um, unfortunately, because of the thickness and where this is at, these do not fit or work on the dock that we have. Although I'm not sure that maybe you would need this as a dock because again, portability is the real strength here. Um, you do have this Oculink port. Now that is another great thing they've added to this. You have your LC and RC buttons along with your LB and RB buttons and your trigger buttons back here. And these buttons are really well designed. I feel like they're really good. They feel nice. They are analog hall sensing analog sticks. So they do have that. You have your SD card support here. Now this is a little different. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the way this door works um, to get it on and off. And then also it comes in at this angle right here, if I can show that. So it slides in at an angle rather than going up and down. So that was a little bit different for me. Um, again, getting this card back in place, uh, this door back in place is a little annoying to say the least. 
On the back here you have a vent, you have your logo, and then you have your usual IONEO spec sticker here that shows this is the English version, 512 gigabyte, 16 gig RAM version that we have here. Now it also has these grips here and it comes with an extra set of grips where you can put them on here. I did not find that I really like that. So I think it's awesome that IONEO has added that, but it's not really something that I personally have found use for. On the bottom here, a single jack for your headphones. Again, I don't know why we couldn't have put a USB-C port here so that we could dock this thing. Not sure, there must be some reason behind it, but I would have liked if there could have been the standard centered USB-C port here uh, on the bottom. On the side here, there's nothing on the side here and nothing on the side here as well. Um, has a nice little indented logo here and this nice little round texture. Uh, opening up, it does go into three different levels of opening. Um, so you can have this all the way out and flat like this. You can have it at a more comfortable angle like this, or you can have it kind of straight up and down where it sits like this. Um, on the face of it, you have your volume up and down, and then you have right here the three buttons and the screen switcher. You have a fingerprint sensor here to power it on. And then you have an optical mouse right here. I was really impressed with this. I found that I got more and more confident when using this over time, really adding to the making this better. You have your standard buttons here and then these sticks. I was a little concerned about how recessed they are, but guys, this, this is good. I like these sticks. I like the placement of the two sticks a lot and they, they just work really well, especially with where we're placed with the uh, back side of it, giving this a, a sense of real comfortability. It's not too heavy. In fact, I found the slide to feel too heavy in my hands. This doesn't really feel that heavy, although it is a thick boy, don't get me wrong. Uh, down here you have your Aya Neo button, which is, you know, really great with the Aya Space 2.0. And you have a back button right here. Then you have your start and select. And then the only weakness here is this D-pad. And you can see that it's pretty far recessed down there, uh, making it a bit just uncomfortable to use. Now, I'm not really going to play a lot of fighting games on this. I do have dedicated handhelds to play fighting games, but I do wish this was maybe a bit of a different raise. Now, I understand why they did this because the lid has to shut and it has to come flush over here. Otherwise, you could damage the screen. So I understand why they did this, but it is a compromise that you should be aware of if you're concerned about D-pads. So that's pretty much an overview of the unit. Let's uh, hop into a little bit of uh, gameplay and show you guys what this can do, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so you can see when you boot up, it's going to default to this little Aya Space um, handy little screen here. And this gives you a really nice overview of some functions that you would want to be aware of. It's pretty easy to switch through here. Um, you're, you're probably familiar with seeing a lot of this in the Aya Space menu on the side, but it's kind of nice that you can just have it right down here and just go to performance, monitor, or any of those settings that, you know, you really want to do it. It does have this smart dual screen. I think this software is a good step in the right direction, but it does need to have a little bit more work here. Um, again, there's a big sort of learning curve to get this thing to work fluid and smooth. Um, I hope that they continue to develop for this and Ioneo, if you're listening, please support third party developers, please help them create something. Let's open source this second screen and let's get some really cool software going for it. Um, and then of course your optical thumbprint reader right there and it brings it up pretty quickly. Um, and so you can see if I hit that button, that smart switch button, it's going to switch the discord down to here from where it was at. And then we can go back to the main menu. So again, it's a good start here. Um, you can add different uh, options down there. But again, setting this thing up to your liking is, is something you're going to want to do at first um, to get it to go. Uh, that being said, what's really cool is I can have down here the Discord running. And then up here, using our optical mouse, let me set this down. We can get up here in the screen and pull open uh, one of our emulators. 
and let's get some 3DS going. Some actually some Nintendo Switch. Let's do some Nintendo Switch emulation. And I do dump my own games. Here's my 3D printed cartridge that I like to store safely my game. Uh, so if you're going to use emulation, please purchase, support the developers, back up the game, uh, which is your right to do since you own it. And then you can play the games like that. And so let's get some Switch going. There we go. Some Yoshi's Crafted World. And so we can get some Switch playing here. And again, I can have Discord down here. And I can just keep track of the different Discords I'm in. This is small. That's the only thing. But, you know, it's just still really cool that you can do this. You can go into the I and Neo Discord here. And I can just continue to chat while I'm playing the game here. Um, again, you can use this second screen in different ways. If we were going to play uh, something like 3DS, I like the Red Yoshi, um, then we could have the dual screen set up and use it like that as well. The keyboard is a little, it's small, a little hard to type on. You could have a Bluetooth keyboard. I haven't tried that actually to see if that would type there. Um, Maybe something I do try as I continue to test this out, but I wanted to get this kind of uh, review out so you guys could kind of start making the decision since this thing is currently still on sale. Choo choo choo, I really love Yoshi and like I've said before, Yoshi is, he's kind of evil man. He uh, He's hard to defeat and he just sits there and he can just chew things and eat things and uh, really just uh, be uh, such an awesome guy. But you can see again, you know, I'm not really going to focus on the emulation on here. You guys know what window emulation does. You know how it works. Again, I wanted to show you more so um, some footage of me playing a real game uh, while, again, I'm doing something on the bottom. Now, switching the bottom to other items, that's where I haven't found a good way. Leave me a comment, Deadheads, if you know a way to how to switch this quickly without messing up all the windows and everything. Maybe there's some sort of software like Handheld Companion that somebody will come up with that will make things like this work just a lot more smooth. Um, again, also, although I'm playing, you know, Nintendo Switch, this thing does uh, Nintendo Wii U uh, as well. And I think in Russ's video, he did a lot of testing of that to see it um, for it. But again, the D-pad's not terrible. It's not that I hate it, I, but for fighting games in particular, I don't know that this D-pad is going to perform like you want it, but for something like Yoshi like this, in fact, having it sit here like this flat, it's not bad at all. Although, you know, really, it's more comfortable like this. And then you can just sit here and scroll. Now, me getting old with my eyesight, you know, this isn't exactly the best way to kind of interact with Discord and read it. You know, I'll probably just still have my phone on the side and then maybe use this for videos or tutorials or facts if you're you know playing through something that you need to have a little guidance on with that being said deadheads uh let's wrap this video up and let's go and review the things i liked about the nintendo i mean i'm sorry listen to me about the ion neo flip ds and things that i thought you know were not very favorable and hopefully will continue to be approved in the future And we'll be right back, deadheads. All right, guys. So let's wrap this video up and let's review the Aya Neo Flip DS. So again, I have a mostly favorable overview of this device. There's so many things I like about it. And there's a few things that are just not quite there for me as well. In many ways, this reminds me of how I felt about the Game Force Ace. There is a lot of promise here in the future, and I hope that this is going to be continued to be supported. But let's talk about the things I do like. So overall form factor and size. I really do like the form factor of this. I like the size of it. It surprised me how small it was. I like how it feels in the hands. I think the weight and the weight distribution is just right. I feel like it's made of good materials. The hinge feels really good and solid. Now hinge is something that everybody's worried about. We know the retroid flip hinge issue and you know over time who knows if this hinge is going to hang in there or not and we all know that 
that's a risk you take with a first generation product. But for right now, I think the hinge is good. I feel like they did a lot of testing and they probably got this to a really good place um, to support it. Um, the size is smaller than I expected and yet it provides a nice bright 7 inch main screen with a 1080p 120Hz refresh rate. Uh, the screen looks great guys. It looks better than the screen on the slide and certainly better than the screen on the IONEO Next Lite. It's amazing to think, you know, we have the IONEO Next Lite here and then you have the flip which is essentially taking a 7 inch screen and compacting it and putting it, you know, in a flip form factor. Uh, but the screen on this is quite, quite stunning uh, when we look at it. Um, it also, that second three and a half inch screen is well enough appointed, though the lack of software support makes it using it on a case by case basis. The thoughtful addition of an optical finger mouse is a right step in improving navigation. Also big props for the inclusion of a dedicated Oculink interface. I don't have a um, 3D video card um, to test the Oculink out. Again, this is not a PC gaming channel, so wasn't really uh, interested in that, but I think it's good that they've added that into there. What else did I like? The controls and rumble rather than that D-pad. I found the rumble in this thing to actually be really good compared to previous IONEO devices. Perhaps the form factor plays into this, but it was a nice surprise. Equally, the placement of the analog hall sticks is just right with the feel of holding the unit while using the analog shoulders and triggers. Again, they're deeply inset, but I feel like it just feels good and right holding this thing and playing with these sticks, which was, you know, somewhat surprising to me. Um, the only weakness is the depth of the D-pad, which really only affects fighting games. And again, that probably was a compromise that had to be made so this thing could be flat and not affect the screen. And here's what I really like the most about this thing, the opportunity, guys. Much like the Game Force Ace, what I really like here is the opportunity this handheld brings. The keyboard version is not unique, right? You know, GPD has a, a version of this with the keyboard that's not you know, very unique. So, but this dual screen PC handheld has much untapped opportunity. While it is yet to materialize, the things you can already do, like 3DS upscaled with shaders, makes this an intriguing promise. Um, Overall, there's some things to like about this quite a bit. I do think that this is a first gen product and keep that in mind. And like with any first gen products, there's still going to be lots of things that are not quite where they should be. Things that are not quite, you know, uh, appearing to be like they should. But let's look at the things that I didn't like, because as usual, there are some things that I think should have been done better. And the first thing we'll talk about is that USB-C port placement. Not sure why the dual USB-C ports needed to be placed where they are located. Again, they're located on the bottom here and not on the part where you would normally dock this thing. So we would expect them to be right here, but they're not there. Instead, they're on the top part right there. So, um, it makes it incompatible with the official IONEO dock um, that I've used with all the previous devices. Um, the learning curve and ease of use. The promise here currently requires quite a bit of patience to set up and use the dual screen effectively. I hope that IONEO will foster and support third-party development for the second screen. There needs to be a better way to navigate between the screens. They do have a right step going with the ISPACE software, which does have that quick switch, but I want to see a lot more development to make this more fluid, intuitive, and make it seem more console-like. Battery life and Windows issues. Unfortunately, the excitement of this handheld is limited like all Windows handhelds by the limited battery life. Even using the battery saver, I only managed to get two and a half hours of gameplay while watching videos on the second screen for 3DS and NDS gaming. And guys, that was using at a balanced power setting so that I got decent emulation performance but didn't push the CPU and GPU too hard. And then Windows still lacks. Windows still has lots of lacking in handheld support. IONEO software has improved, but even with iSpace 2.0, the experience cannot match the intuitive ease of a dedicated handheld like the Nintendo 3DS. So there it is, guys. This is a handheld that still continues to show a lot of potential promise in the future. 
but right now it's not still quite there. This is going to be better for people who are willing to be early adopters, who are willing to test out and work through some of the frustrations that comes with this. While we would all like to have a Nintendo 3DS like uh, software experience with all the benefits of having a high powered CPU with upscaling and shaders, we're not there yet. Right now, we still have to deal with a lot of Windows issues. We have to deal with a lot of software, lack of support, and it takes a little bit of work just to get something in place. But once it's in place, it's pretty good, guys. You can go check out the unboxing and see some 3DS simulation and how good it is to have that dual screen running. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember, I'm not a PC gamer, so this is coming from a retro gamer's aspect. I'm sure there's more criticisms that could be levied at this thing. And to be honest, for the price, I don't think most people are going to buy this to play 3DS and NDS. And if you do, I don't really know that you should do that because there's other alternatives that are pretty good, like the hot dog that we shown on the video, or even a snow cake, which does some pretty good looking OLED 3DS. Um, on the screen there. But again, this is giving you the true physical two screens, so it is a little bit different. You can always go back and get an original Nintendo 3DS as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching the channel and supporting, and we'll see you next time. Dead Fred out.